college censorship is continuing to be a pretty important issue. The Hill says that Jerry Falwell Jr. killed student newspaper articles at university that were critical of Trump. Yes, so this is censorship on a college campus, censorship from the right against the left, or against people who aren't as far right, let's say. So this is something that many people don't think exists. It most certainly does. Now, that doesn't mean that there aren't examples of uh, pink-haired social justice warriors trying to deplatform Ben Shapiro and people like that. That exists, too. I'm against that as well. But this is something that exists, and also, by the way, might I add, nobody talks about this kind of censorship. This kind of censorship, it, I, is that even happening? I don't even know if that's happening. It can't be happening. I, I don't hear it. It's not, there's not a, an entire media apparatus that's dedicated to pushing these stories out there front and center so people think it doesn't exist, because they don't have, there is that, that media apparatus does not exist to put the onus on it, to stress it. And it's all about their lies by omission and their lies by commission. A lie by omission is, you t oh my god, the free speech crisis on college campus, oh my god, huge problem, huge problem, huge problem. Only focus on the instances where it's the left censoring the right. Now again, I'm not downplaying that, because I'm against that. But what I am saying is, if you only focus on that angle of it, that is a lie by omission, because the reality is quite different than the picture that's being painted. Further evidence of that is a story that we I reported on probably just a few weeks ago now. It was uh, a nonpartisan free speech report from Georgetown University, and they found that 75% of college censorship is against the left. Now again, let me be clear. When you go to the specific examples in the study, that is not the left censoring the left. That is the right censoring the left. So, uh, here are the examples that are cited in that study. At California State University, Fresno, in, uh, an adjunct professor of American history was removed from his position for sending tweets criticizing President Trump. Hmm, I'm sensing a trend here. Professors at Syracuse University and Trinity College were sharply criticized for online comments perceived as calls for violence. At the University of California, San Diego, death threats led to the cancellation of a commencement address by a Princeton professor who had already given one at Hampshire College that was harshly critical of President Trump. Yet again, I see a pattern. At the University of Iowa, a classics professor was attacked for suggesting that the white color of marble... Uh, statues from antiquity was the result of their original colors fading over time. I don't even get what that censorship is for, but doesn't really matter now, does it? The, uh, the fact is, 75% of the censorship is against the left, and it is from the right against the left, and one of the most prominent, um, or what I should say is, one of the examples that I keep finding over and over, that actually is getting some media coverage, because of great work done by The Intercept, for example, is that a lot of the college censorship is particularly of people who are in favor of BDS and are critical of Israel. So if you're critical of Israel and you're pro-BDS, that is spun as if it is anti-Semitism, and the right weaponizes that and cracks down on the left and censors and deplatforms the left. So the most prominent examples of campus censorship in today's day and age, according to the nonpartisan study on this, is... Censorship of the left, that's because people are critical of President Trump, and censorship over BDS and pro-Palestine activism. So listen, man, I try to be consistent on this. I've done, set when Milo Yiannopoulos, when there was a fucking riot for, to people try to, trying to stop Milo Yiannopoulos from speaking on college campuses, I did a segment where I said, you're wrong, I don't agree with that at all, let him speak. So I'm consistent on this, I'll defend it when it's the right-wingers, I'll defend it when it's the left-wingers, but what I certainly won't do is mislead you and make you think that most of the cases are, uh, you know, the authoritarian left censoring people because that is not the case. And I certainly won't hide or not discuss the instances where it works in the other direction, which happen to be more numerous. So I, I cannot wait to see the segments from the likes of the free speech warriors on the right where they, um... They get really angry at Jerry Falwell Jr. and they criticize him for his 
censorship and his deplatforming and the fact that he's a fucking snowflake who needs a safe space and he doesn't allow anything critical of President Trump to be in the newspaper, the uh, student newspaper. I can't wait for that, that vicious and accurate critique of Falwell Jr. That is definitely coming from the likes of, say, Prager U. It ain't happening. No way it's going to happen. But that's why you guys come here, because you get the whole picture, not just part of it.